Now then YouTube, I'm the Toughman and welcome back to some more Thorncraft 5 guide. So, in um, I do apologise guys, there has been a wait of a couple of days for these videos to come out. The reason why is because I've been ill, if you haven't heard from the previous videos. And um, it comes to the stage where I just wasn't able to record because I was coughing left, right and centre. And it really would have been too bad for you guys. So, I'm back. I'm still a little bit unwell, but uh, you know, just... Bear with me on that one. There has been a couple of bug fixes since the last time, guys. And what I did mention was these buffers. Um, when you shift and right click, you now get the little collar that comes over the top there. And that is what I was on about in uh, one of the previous episodes. So keep that in mind. There has been an addition as well, guys. There has been an addition to the improved Essentia distillation. There's been a second page added for the auxiliary venting port. You have also discovered a way to manage the flux generated by the smelting process. By running the slurry through a secondary set of Essentia filters, you are able to separate out the, f uh, the flux and safely vent it as harmless steam. The process manages to reduce flux pr uh, pr produced by about a third, and additional vents will increase this, though there are diminishing returns. So keep that in mind, guys. The Morphic Resonator, four iron ingots, an Essentia filter, alchemical construct, and two alchemical brass ingots, with 250 air, aqua, and 125 auto. Other than that, the other bug fixes to note are the Arcane Spa that I showed you guys um, in a previous episode is now able to be get filled back up with water again. <sighs> That's so good. <laughs> that is really nice, actually. It's actually used one of the purified bath salts, so if I do that, it'll just disappear. But what I was saying in the other episode, guys, if we just really quickly go over this, is if I get some buckets of water there, is it will mix with ingredient. We want to use just the fluid. So what it will do is it will pour it up like that, and it will start to fill that area with it. That's what I was trying to show you guys previously. Now, you can actually do it again, which is fantastic. But anyway, today's episode is going to be concentrated on artifice. Now, it's been a while, and uh, there is quite a few different stuff to be able to go through on this stuff as well, guys. So, without further ado, let's get on with it. Okay, so starting with the artifice tab, we're going to start right in the middle. Basic artificing. Now, you will find this um, immediately, straight away, guys. So, click that, and then you will get access to a couple of the bits and bobs that you can get that you will know you'll be able to use in crafting recipes and such a little bit later on. Primal charms, for example, we've already seen in the Thaumaturgy tab when you've got the um, the Silverwood staff, I think it is. It requires the primal charm right on the end there. So this is how you make a primal charm. One golden ingot and all of the different types of shards as well as one balanced shard and 75 base of uh, each type. So that is... Uh, yeah, once it, oh, and another thing, guys. It says, rumours persist that these charms have additional powers, but there's little more than hearsay. Apparently, if you hold it in your hand for long enough, it will start popping little uh, balls of... of Vs to fill up your wand on the floor. At least it used to do. I don't know if that's the same now. I would presume it probably still is. So moving on, we've got the mundane amulet, which is three string and an alchemical brass. We've got the mundane ring, which is a ring of alchemical brass nuggets. We have the mundane belt, which is three leather and alchemical brass. And we also have the mirrored glass, which is one quicksilver and any sort of glass pane with 50 Ignis and 50 Terra. That is also used in uh, some recipes later on, some crafting recipes later on. But these things, the mundane amulet, ring, and belt, are used for something else as well later on, which I will get to in a moment. But first, we're going to skip over to the Infernal Furnace. The best way um, to describe this is it's like a pulverizer, or it's like um, the... Macerator from Industrial Craft, if you're used to that, it actually doubles your ores, or it will allow you to double your ores. By harnessing raw ignis within a furnace crafted from obsidian and nether brick, you've created a highly efficient and fuel-free furnace. So efficient, in fact, that it occasionally will produce bonus materials in the form of nuggets or other items. While this is essentially free, it's also a very slow process, uh, it's very slow, unless the furnace gets a steady supply of ignis vests from the aura. I'm not sure how you would allow it to get a steady supply of the Ignis Vs, but still, you can craft it, guys. It's a mystical construct, so basically you've got to build this structure first and then hit it with your wand with 250 Ignis and 250 Terra. It should be noted that the occasional bit of flux escapes into the environment. Items you wish to smelt needs to be dropped into the top of the furnace and it will be spit out of the front. So, let's set this up and I'll show you how it does. 
And here we are guys, this is the structure, already built, as you can see from here. Obsidian in this cross pattern at the bottom there, with nether brick going all up the sides. And of course the obsidian in the cross pattern at the top, with the lava bucket in the middle, and the iron bars towards the edge. And we've got that right there, so we right click it with our wand. And there we go, we've made an infernal furnace. Now what this basically does guys, if we get some iron ore, for example, um, 64, yeah, that'll do, because I'll only put a, a few into here. We're going to chuck one, two, three, four into there. And that will get smelted, guys, and then pop out of the front of the furnace. Now, what I mean by is it acts like a pulverizer. It's not quite as efficient as that. You can see some nuggets actually coming out with it. So you get slightly more than one iron ingot back from that, and it's very important to know that. Very important to know that. What you can also do is the clusters that you can get, you can put them into here, and this will also double the amount of clusters that you can get. I'm not sure, and I'll test this in a second. So we've got five iron uh, ingots, and we've got three iron nuggets from four iron ore. At least that's what I think it is. So let's get some of that those clusters. Oh, for crying out loud, I can't even spell. Cluster, there we go. And we're going to get five of these. And we're just going to go ahead and pop them into there. And then we're going to watch these as they pop out the front. There we go. But there is some iron nuggets in there as well. So you get just over two ingots back of all of that. So that's very, you know, well, it's great. It's great to, to know. Just keep that in mind as well, guys, until it's popped out. Is that the last one? Is that the last one there? Yes. Yes, I think that's the last one. So you got one iron nugget, and you did get five iron ingots back from that as well. And that is what the Infernal Furnace can do for you. Going off on the left-hand side of this basic artificing, we go to the Arcane Lamp. Now, this is something that you can buy straight off, as long as you've got the experience levels to be able to buy it. The Arcane Lamp, uh, lamp is pretty great, guys. You can make it with a Daylight Sensor, two iron ingots, an Amber Block, and a piece of Nitor with 40 Ignis and 40 Air. Now, uh, when attached to the base of an arcane ball, which we haven't actually found yet, the arcane lamp gains an additional ability to light up the tunnel that the ball digs. We'll get more into that um, when the arcane ball comes along. This mystical lamp can be attached to walls, floors, or ceilings, and will provide a strong and steady light. Additional sources of light may also appear up to 16 blocks away whenever light levels fall below accepted safe levels. Remember, only you can prevent zombie outbreaks. These secondary sources of light will disappear soon after the lamp has been removed. The lamp can be turned off by applying a redstone signal. So let's go and have a look, guys. The arcane lamp, which is right here, basically, if we can turn it to night time, and we pop this down, it's actually created a light source over there. You can see it where it creates light sources, where there's these little random pieces of light that just pop up which is great. But that is basically what the arcane lamp can do. Let me go ahead and turn it back to daytime. There we go. And let's go back into here, because there's a couple of things that you can now unlock once you've got the arcane lamp. You can get the lamp of growth, which encourages, th uh, encourages things to grow. It's really not that hard to work out, guys. Um, the lamp of growth, two bits of gold, two to earth shards, two bone meal, and the arcane lamp in the middle with 16 herba, eight instrumentum, eight lux, and eight victus with a moderate instability. It's an arcane infusion, of which we will get to in this set of uh, episodes, guys. Um, the arcane lamp from which it is made, the lamp of growth, does not catch, uh, cast much light unless it's provided with herba essentia. If this is done, any plants which grow where its light shines, the brightest, will grow much faster than normal. Essentia uh, can be fed to the lamp by attaching it directly to an Essentia piping system. The lamp can be turned off by applying a redstone signal. So basically, guys, if we get the lamp of, there it is, growth, and if we pop that down over here, for example, it's not got any uh, herba in there, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is get a warded jar, which I've actually got some here, pop that down onto the floor there, fill this up with herba, good stuff, and then put the lamp of growth on top of it. And you can see it's actually lit up. Now what will happen, guys, is around the lamp of growth, if you've got some dirt, for example, there we go, let's pop that around there, and then the ho, not the gho, the ho.
And we'll also need some water, won't we? I forgot about that. Water. To keep the ground hard. There we go. Now, if we actually plant some seeds onto here, it will go ahead and use the herba from the glass uh, from the jar and grow the seeds that are around it much faster than how they would normally grow. And you can tell this when they get the little bone meal, that little effect. Well, I say bone meal effect, it's just like this gaseous effect that comes up there. It's pretty cool, guys. But that's basically uh, what it looks like and what and how that the arcane, the lamp of growth actually works. Next on the list, guys, is the lamp of fertility. Now, obviously, you know what this thing does already. Um, you need two gold ingots, two fire shards, a wheat, a carrot, and an arcane lamp. It is an arcane infusion with 16 bestia, 8 lucrum, or desiderium, um, 8 lux, and 8 victus, with an instability of moderate. And this thing will allow you to breed cows, or anything else for that matter. Um, let's go ahead and get lamp of growth. There we go. Now we're going to need awarded jars again for this one. Let's pop it over here. Uh, and you're going to need Victus for this. To be able to make this work. So let's pop all that into there. Great stuff. Let's pop that into there. Nice. And you can see it's nicely lit there. Now let's get a quick fence in here. Now, what will happen is it will automatically breed the animals for you up until there is eight of that animal uh, currently present. So let me go ahead and get uh, a couple of cows in here. And let it do its business so you can see. Wait for it. Are you going to start smush faces? There we go. Smush faces has been had. And there is the little cow that comes along with it. So remember, guys, it will do this up until there is eight of the same animal. And then it won't do it again from there on. That is the lamp of fertility. Before we get into the more complicated things, guys, what I'm going to do is go straight up from basic artif uh, artificing and go up to table. Now... You will already know how to create a table by now, guys. I've shown it in previous episodes on how you go ahead and uh, create a table. But basically, you do it like this, which is three slabs of any type of wood and two planks of any type of wood. Also, you can get a stone table now, which is three stone slabs and two smooth stone. So going from there, there is also the research table. We already know how to do this, guys. You make a table, you put the scribing tools on there, and that will give you a research table. You need that to be able to research anything. The arcane workbench is pretty similar. You just need a wooden table, guys, and then stick your iron capped wooden wand on that wooden table with a right click, and it will change that into an arcane work table, which is great. And also banners. Now, these things are new, I believe. I, I'm not sure. I can't remember if they were in the last one or not, because I never used them. But anyways, sometimes a thaumaturge doesn't need to create something that shakes the very foundations of reality. Sometimes he just wants to be, uh, just wants something pleasing to the eye. You've developed a simple enchantment that allows you to apply thaumaturgical symbols to banners. And you do so by clicking with a file of Essentia on a banner. Oh yeah, these were in the last one, I remember. Um, and the symbol will be emblazoned on it. Shift clicking on the banner will remove the symbol. So let's go ahead and get a banner. And I'll show you exactly what that means. So let's get the uh, the Thaumaturgy banner. Where are, th are these the banners? I think it is. So we'll put the red banner down. And we will take our file of Essentia. Do we have any? Yes, we do. The Terra one. And we'll give a right click on the banner. And you can see it's got that nice little... Uh, thing on there showing the terror symbol which is great and then of course you can shift and right click and it will get rid of the symbol it will not um it will not give you the file of essentia back so be very aware of that <laughs> and there you go that's the banners well guys that is going to be it for the first episode of the uh tab of the artifice tab we'll come back next episode we'll start to work on the arcane stone paving stones the barrier stone the arcane levitator and of course back into the thermostatic stuff and then we will go from there probably over to the arcane bellows and redstone relay and then in future episodes we will get into the nitty gritty of the big stuff which is infusion how to uh, go ahead with the infusion enchanted fabric and then go through all of the little bits and bobs that we've got <coughs> sorry Ah, yeah, we'll go through. <coughs> <coughs> I swear to God, this illness is killing me. So anyways, we will go through all of this stuff 
in future episodes. I do hope you've enjoyed it, guys, and if it's been useful, please go ahead and let me know. If there's something wrong, then in the comment section below, please go ahead and leave a comment as well. And I will see you next episode. Until then, I'll be the top man. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, stay safe.